share my screen. Uh, I am going to be talking a little bit about something you already probably have been hearing about in the news and everything. Uh, you know, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about AI. Obviously, all these topics is mainly about giving you like a small window, like a, it's not even a trailer. It's more like a teaser for a movie. Uh, the idea is, you know, I show you a few things. I talk about a few things. You may have some questions. Uh, I will answer them. And then, you know, you'll get an idea because I am someone who is in coding. Uh, all my workshops have been in programming. And of course, I use AI every day. So I'll, I'm, I'm not just talking this as a theory. I'm speaking about this as a person who has been using this uh, as part of my daily life. So I'm going to talk about all those things uh, today. Now, the first thing, obviously. No, is, I, want, I want to just say one thing really fast. So that everybody, if you go to your student portals, you have a link that you can actually use chat GTP in your student sections. There's a link that you can open up and start asking questions, getting this information. So you have access to Jack GTP right now. Everything that Jay is going to teach you right now, you can go to your student portal and put into practice, okay? Okay, there you go, guys. Yeah, there you go, there you go, yeah. So now the first thing is, now what is AI? Now, AI is not like something new or something. We've always had AI on some level throughout the computing history. Like for example, every time you play a video game, you are in fact dealing with a level of AI. You know, any game you can think of, for example, I play this game called Call of Duty, where when you're playing, you have enemy characters. So obviously the enemy characters are trying to shoot at me. They're trying to hide. They're trying to uh, pick up a new weapon. But for example, if they run out of bullets, uh, sometimes I see them trying to throw away the gun that they're, they're using and then pick up another weapon from nearby. So all those things are in fact AI. So that comes under that umbrella. However, though, it has become suddenly very, very important right now, mostly uh, because, you know, you see in the news and everything, things are kind of changing because of this new one, which is the uh, the chat GPT. You know, this is suddenly kind of, I think somewhere around November or December, the preview was opened up. And then this, this kind of became, and you'll notice that this is actually, you'll notice on the bottom of the screen, uh, somewhere you mentioned that it's like chat GPT version three or version four, one of the two that you might be using, uh, which means there has been chat GPT one and two already available for some time. So what, why is this suddenly becoming popular? What is the whole point of this? And why is there so much talk about um, this AI out of the blue? Right. So the, 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 the thing is, with any technology that becomes popular, we are mainly talking about how kind of easy you can use something, you know, like, for example, uh, Android smartphones or iPhones, you know, smartphones kind of became popular after around uh, 2010 or something like that. But there have always been smartphones, even way back in the 90s, you know, Windows was making smartphones all the way back in 1999 and 2000 and so on. And yet it is only after the iPhone and the Android came into the industry that everybody started using smartphones and touch screens and stuff like that. So similarly, the AI chat GPT things have already been there for many, many years now. However, it's only now they're able to make it so easy to use. And now everybody wants to use it and, 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 and make it as part of their lifestyle and stuff like that. So the most important thing when you talk about uh, uh, chat GPT is that you may have heard about this already. The whole idea is how do you interact with the AI? Because, you know, for example, right now I am speaking to you on a Zoom session. So you can see me on your laptop or tablet, however you're joining, and I'm able to see you because I have a camera right here, you know, like there you go. So you can, I'm able to transmit myself, broadcast myself. Same thing, I don't know if you can see it, I have a microphone here, like a condenser. So I'm speaking to it and that is how I'm able to interact with you. So any kind of technology that you're talking about, the most important thing is how do you go ahead and interact with it? You know, that is the main thing. So that's the first thing I wanna talk about. So when we are talking about AI, any kind of AI really, there are different types of AI. You know, I'm gonna just show you some of them today. The main thing is you already probably heard about this word. They are called prompts. 
okay? So when you're trying to talk, like I said, like if I want to make sure you hear me, I use this condenser and I speak into it, right? And you have a camera, you know, I'm able to look at it and the camera captures me. Similarly, if you want to interact with the AI, then the first thing you want to understand is you need to start using prompts, right? So as I'm talking to you, let me go ahead and simply show you how that would work. For example, I have already logged in. Uh, those of you who've never used it though, the first thing you ought to understand is uh, just go online, just search. I mean, uh, Dr. Lambert said that you already have access from your student portal, just in case, you know, you want to just try it out on your other computer or show your friends or something. They can just go in and search for ChatGPT or OpenAI. OpenAI is the company which is behind this technology and OpenAI is kind of funded by Microsoft. So in a way you can say that ChatGPT is from Microsoft, right? So go here and then once you go there, you get like a welcome page or something like that. And right here on the bottom left corner, you have a button called Try Chat GPT. That's, that's all there is to it. And then like any other website, you can sign up with your email address. It could be your university email address. It could be your regular Gmail address, anything that you're talking about. Or you can simply click on login and you can use, I mean, most of you will probably have a Google account already. Uh, sometimes you'll get this error because you know it is like a free service. Uh, so every now and then you'll get this error, but that's okay. I'm already logged in, so I should be just fine for today. So I'm already logged in. So if you get an error like that, it just simply means that their server is down or something and just try again later. So you can simply sign in with your Google account or you can create a brand new account. So that is still the first step you have to do wherein you sign in with a Google account. And I believe you will have to verify like uh, I think you have to, in India at least, you know, what we have to do is we have to enter a phone number and then for the phone number, they are going to send you like a verification code or something. And only if the code is verified, then they give you access. So some kind of verification might happen depending on where you live and stuff like that. And there are some countries where it's not even available. So a lot of factors going on here. So hopefully you should be able to do this without any problems. And once you log in, my dear students, you will be welcome with a page like this. Now, what do you see here? On the left side, you can see that some of the stuff I have done in the past, you know, those things get stored on the left side so I can go back and see what I'm trying to do. And the main thing is, this is where, uh, you know, this is the rub. Gee, I'm not sure, but all we see is the first slide here, interact with the AI prompts. We don't see anything on the, it hasn't oh, changed. Oh, hold on. Uh, am I not sharing? Oh, hold, hold on, Dr. Lambert. Oh, I, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, thank you, Dr. Lambert. I must have only shared the part. What about now? Yes. Oh, guys, in that case, I need to repeat the last step. I'm sorry, Dr. Lambert, I was sharing the PowerPoint. I wasn't sharing the screen. My apologies, sir. Um, so, folks, what I was saying was, go online, you know. Uh, Dr. Lambert already said your student login has a direct link, uh, just in case you're trying to show it to your friends or trying it on a mobile phone. A search for chat GPT or open AI. You'll get something like this. Open it. And then you'll get another welcome page. Here you have a button called Try Chat GPT. Go there and then boom, that's it. After that, you have an option to sign up or log in. I would recommend you use your Google account. So simply log in directly. And depending on where you are, like which country and which state, they may ask you to verify with your phone number and stuff. I've already verified, so I'm not able to show it to you again to you. And then that's all there is to it. You are in and you should be able to see an interface which looks like this. You know, it's like a welcome page. They give you some warnings, like limitations and stuff like that. That's okay. That's pretty standard. Now, one thing you have to understand is ChatGPT is kind of free. I, I say kind of because, you know, like everything else in life, when you're not, you know, paying for something, you do get like a simplified version of everything. So if you're using the free plan, the responses might take a while, things may be a little slower, and sometimes it may refuse to work. So if you notice here on the bottom left corner, there is a button called upgrade to plus or something. So if you really are serious, if you really believe perhaps after this workshop, and I show you a few things, if you're impressed, then maybe you want to try and get the you know, pro subscription or something. Now you'll notice that I don't have it because I'm already paying money in another location. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So if you really are enamored by AI, if you really feel there's a way for you to take benefit, take advantage of AI, then uh, the, the plus subscription is something you may wanna consider, but at $20 per month, it seems like a lot of money to spend. So I'll leave it to you to decide what you wanna do. 
Uh, and I'm already paying for AI in another service. I will talk about that in a few minutes. So that's the first thing. So it will be a little slow. Sometimes it will not work. It's a free service, so you can't really complain. Now, coming back to what I was talking about. So the idea is, ultimately, the way you interact with the AI comes down to prompts. So prompts are simple sentences or words that you type in to tell the AI what you want. Okay, so now let's, now I'm talking to you, right? Like I work as a tutor. So sometimes I like to feel like I, you know, somebody should make a song about me. You know, I, I really wish people would write songs about their tutor and maybe sing it in a nice voice or something and send it on Instagram or something. Now, obviously many of us don't know how to write songs, but wait a second, we have AI. So I could go to AI and I'll ask the AI prompt, write a short, poem about double codes coding tutor. So what I'm doing here, I'm writing a simple sentence. I want to make a song about myself because nobody else will write it. So I'm going to tell the AI to go ahead and give me a poem about coding tutor. So I'm going to press enter. Now, literally in front of her eyes, the AI is writing a poem about a coding tutor. Now, this is what really excites me. You know, uh, so in fact, on my YouTube channel, I, I even sung one of these songs and turned that into a video just for the fun of it. Okay, I will send the link uh, <laughs> at the end of the session, right? I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, but there's another thing I want to tell my students, guys, if you're going to be in technology, okay? Uh, I mean, I'm almost 40, so maybe for me it's different. But one of the things that excites about technology is you have to learn to have fun with it because a lot of these things, they are very complex. You know, you might be thinking, okay, you know, he just wrote a sentence and stuff like that. You know, that is called prompting, but it is a big deal. Uh, believe it or not, every now and then somebody will actually hire me to teach them how to come up with prompts. So it's not actually easy to write the correct prompt. So this is the first step you're going to learn as a student. What are you going to ask? You now, what are you going to type? What are you going to use when you're talking to the AI to get what you want? Now, today I'm mainly talking to you as a coding tutor. So I've just given an example, like a poem or something, right? Maybe after the class, if I'm bored, I'll record this as a YouTube video and put it on my YouTube channel and all that. I may do that, okay? But now let's do some coding thing, yes? So JavaScript, right? That's what I've been talking in all the workshops. So let's say I'm new to coding. And I want like um, a code for a simple bubble sort. I don't know if you guys know about this. You know, bubble sort is one of the most basic, basic things that you are going to learn as a computer student. Okay. In fact, this is the first code I learned way back when I was 17. Uh, you know, back then, you know, I'm talking like 20 years ago, maybe more than 20 years ago, there was no internet or faculties did not know because the computers were new. There were very few people who knew coding. There were no resources or something. So I had to learn this on my own. I remember spending like four to six weeks just figuring out how to do bubble sort and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is, so suppose this is 23 years ago. I'm 17. Well, I hope I was 17 again. I mean, who doesn't want to be young again? Anyway, that's a story for another day. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to ask the computer, give me the code for bubble sort in JavaScript. So I can literally type that sentence. I can say, give me the code for, I'll, I'll just try to use, I like to use double quotes, bubble sort in, I'm going to say JavaScript. Now that's the language I usually teach. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to say enter and right in front of her eyes, the AI is going to sit down and give us a nice and working, simple JavaScript. And there you go. It not only give it, no, in, in programming, I'm sure you guys know there are two things. There is function definition, and then there is function calling. So here, the computer is like, hey, man, you know what? Here is your function definition, right? And then here is how you would call it. Now, the thing about AI folks, you know, I want you to understand this, you know, like, uh, please understand that an AI is just like a friend or even a faculty or even a teacher, all right? So you can literally use AI as a virtual teacher. There are many people who are already doing it and I'm gonna show you one more AI 
brand that I use every day in my software development work, and I'll show you how useful it is. But before we get to that, the important thing is just like a real person, just like a tutor, just like a textbook, AI is going to make mistakes. So if you are going to use AI, it is very, very important that you remember that. So do not take anything, you know, like when you're learning something, uh, yes, of course, you have to have trust in your faculty. You have to have trust in your tutor. Obviously, you will trust AI, but you know, it's always 99% trust, right? 1%, there may be, there's, a, there's a situation where everybody is human. You know, the AI is from humans. So it has its own error things, bias. There's a lot of bias in AI, but probably there is something we can discuss some other time. So remember that it will make some mistakes. So now, if I'm a coder, now what can I do is I can do a simple test if this works. So if I was like looking at this code, I could literally go to, I talked about this in one of my other workshops. You have a website called Code Pen. I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a new pen and then I'll copy this code. There we go. Right. Let me just check if it works. So there it is. I'm going to put this code here. Right. And then I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to say, again, I'll copy this and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to hit save. Okay. There you go. And then if I check the console, I can see here, uh, let me see if I can get, ah, there you go. I don't know if you guys can see, let me try to zoom in. Yeah, there you go, I'm zooming in. And you can see here that I sent four, three, two, one. You know, the uh, bubble sort is ultimately about sorting things. So I sent four, three, two, one as the input and I got the answer one, two, three, four, a perfect sort. So now I know that yes, the AI is giving me code that actually works. So when you are using AI, this is one of the things I wanna really emphasize on. So some of you may be thinking, hey, this looks cool, right? And some of you might be thinking, or maybe bad luck, uh, your faculty is not as good as you want him or her to be, or maybe uh, currently you are pursuing some other course, but you're curious about coding and you want to learn a lot of new things, then, or maybe you're not able to afford a tutor or something like that, then the AI can act as a placeholder tutor. And there are many students who have decided to just forget an actual human tutor and just use AI to learn coding completely because whatever it is that you want to do, the AI can usually do it. You know, like for example, I showed you that this like, they're asking you like a 20 bucks a month. You know, a coding tutor obviously is gonna cost you a lot more money. So maybe you're thinking, okay, the technology is still like 90%, 99%, some kind of problem. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna spend $20, $20 and see if I can just learn on your own by using AI. So such kind of scenarios are very much a possibility. And it's kind of ironic because I myself am a coding tutor and I'm talking about technology which might one day uh, replace me. Now, again, we're gonna talk about that some other day. Uh, we are not gonna get into that today, but this is what I'm talking about, folks. You know, If you are trying to learn coding, I just showed you how you can ask the AI assistant, chat GPT, and this is how it's going to try and help you. So this is where I, I request students who are in a programming course or thinking of a programming course, you know, this may not replace your tutor yet, but it can be a handy coding partner. You know, in computer science, we do something called as a co-programming. You know, we always do this thing called pro-programming. Uh, I don't know if everybody does this or it's something we only do in India, but in, in back in the college days, what he used to do was whenever we are learning something, you know, like especially before an exam or a workshop or something, all of us friends, you know, like we, we, we usually operate in a group of four or five friends, you know, like we know each other for many years. We would group and gang up uh, at, at one friend's house, usually the one who has, you know, who's rich and has a bigger house or something. So we would end up in that house and kind of learn together. We used to call it group study or something. Now, I'm not a big fan of group study, but I am a fan of co-programming, which is group study for coding. Now, for any number of reasons, maybe you're not able to find a coding partner. Perhaps you like to learn by yourself or where you live, maybe you don't have the option anymore to travel to your friend's house or a friend to come to you. I mean, times have changed, situations are different. So the AI, which is almost like a real person, like a virtual person, could be your 
co-programmable. So that is where I see a lot of benefit. You know, in my, in my classes, when I take classes to my clients and students, I always tell them, just go for it. You know, I, you already have a tutor in me, but go ahead, use AI to get your questions answered. Because normally what we do is like before the AI, if you want something, I would go online, right? I would go online, I'll like, okay, I'll say bubble sort and JavaScript, I'll just search and I'll, I'll come to the code. You know, there you go, I got it. You know, this is how we used to do before November. So I have the answer right here written by some person and there are some discussions going on. I can take the code. So this is how we used to do things before AI. But now I don't have to search at all. I mean, if I want to, I can still do it. But why should I do all those things when I can go here as if I'm asking a friend or a tutor, type what I want and I get the answer which I want. So this is, this is the main thing about using AI in coding with ChatGPT, my dear students. Uh, if you have any questions before I go to the next topic, let me know, guys. Dr. Lombard, anything which I need to uh, respond to or something, let me know, sir. No, all I can say is that, uh, you know, you, when you think about parts of Africa, they say that it's like technologically deficient. So yes. there's, not a, there's not a lot of people actually working these programming and the internet is, is still being improved there in parts of Africa. So, what do you think would be the impact of artificial intelligence like this in a place like Africa to, would it be good to really start developing the industry down there? Because uh, in some sense, there aren't enough programmers already in Africa. Right, so that's what I'm thinking, Dr. Lambert. Like, uh, uh, sir, whenever I think of AI and you know, within my industry of software, I like to use the word, uh, you know, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, democratization. Something that wasn't available to everyone is now available to everyone. Uh, an example, sir, is uh, I mentioned that I have a YouTube channel and I even recorded a poem and uploaded it and all that. Now, uh, sometimes I, ha I let's say I need an image, Dr. Lambert. So what I do, sir, is I'm, that's exactly what I was going to talk next. See, I have this AI. Another one which I want to talk about is called is from Bing. You know the Microsoft guys. Okay, they have re they have introduced another AI feature which is similar to ChatGPT. But the, what I really like about this, Dr. Lambert, is I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, let's say I'm talking to you, Professor, and what I want to do is. Uh, right now, let's say, Dr. Lambert, I already told you, sir, I like you very much and all that. And let's say I want to sing your praise and I need a photo, uh, some kind of a painting of you for my YouTube video. Now, I'm not an artist, professor. I don't know how to draw. I can code uh, if that is considered art. So what I could do is I can go here. I would say, uh, I would say, uh, please don't take offense, Dr. Lambert. I'm going to just call you a 60-year-old person. I'm, I don't think you're 60. Let me make it 50. So 50-year-old, um, you know. Uh, a white person, okay, white person, professor uh, sitting uh, in a room. And then I'm going to say, this is what I want for a black blog post, okay? So see what happens, Dr. Lambert. Right in front of you, the AI is going to paint a photo about a 50-year-old you know, white person professor. So if I'm making a blog, I'm writing a blog about you or making a YouTube video, you know, I need to put a photo somewhere. I, I have, you know, th there you go. So, uh, you know, this may not be exactly you, is but that, this one looks kind of like that, you. Is that a painting? Yeah. Is it based on a real photograph? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know where the air gets, you know, so there you go, Professor. This kind of looks like you. I think, you know, if you grow a beard or something, I think you'll I still look very handsome. So, you know, <laughs> uh, wear a glass and sit like this. I, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is what I'm talking about, Professor. You know, uh, like you said, uh, you know, one one place, you know, there are some concerns about AI, sir. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, like you said, if there are places where uh, technology is limited, manpower is limited, money is limited, you know, it is a, there is a possibility uh, for like, let's say a university or something in Africa where they can perhaps install a local copy of the AI on the campus. So they may not have the money to hire 10 coding tutors, but they could perhaps uh, at a lower cost install a AI tutor. So the students on campus can, you know, just log in with their mobile phones. You know, maybe they don't even, they can't even afford computers, sir. 
So they can simply log in on the mobile phone with the slowest internet possible and get their coding questions answered. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do Indiana Jones at 60 <laughs> years old going through a swamp. Uh, I, I don't know if it will pick up the IP, uh, but I'm going to try, sir. So I'm going to say, <laughs> I could just make it a professor, Dr. Lombard. So let me just okay. stick to the professor. So like a professor. Archaeology professor. There we go. So I could do that. So this is again prompts, guys. You know, uh, please don't think we are diverging. So this is the prompt thing we're talking about. So I'm trying to talk to the AI. So I'm going to say archaeology. So we can, we actually see here in bing.com, images create. Okay. Uh, so it just just search for Bing Image Creator, Dr. Lambert. So let me just okay. put that on the slide here. Bing so get Image Creator. So let me just put it here. Uh, just go for search for Bing Image Creator. This is also part of the whole chat GPT thing, sir. So let me try the the professor archaeology professor wading through swamp. Uh, I'll make it raining as well. Why not? And we'll get we'll try to get a digital paint on that. Uh, let's see what happens, Dr. Lambert. So so this is what I'm talking about, sir. Like you said. You know, there are a lot of places where a human tutor may not be available. And I really see, uh, you know, people be able to access high quality coding guidance. You know, all they need to do is train the faculty to, there you go, sir. That's so, so amazing. So quickly. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So it's pretty fast. And, and I'm using the free version. If I have the paid version, it's even faster. Wow. So now what happens, Professor? This is what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not an artist, so I, I can't hire, hire an artist as well. So if I'm writing a blog post about you, for example, I could take a photo like this. I could make multiple photos like this. And I, while I'm talking about you, I could use different images. So it's cool. And, you know, it's a visual thing. And, and it helps. So this is what I talk about democratization, Dr. Lambert. So places where something did not exist we can leverage AI to give it to the folks who didn't have it. Is there any type of copyright on these images? Oh, that's another thing, sir. So this became clarified very, very early, like last year in the US Supreme Court, they said anything created from AI cannot be copyrighted. So because uh, the Supreme Court was very clear. In fact, I was following that case very carefully because it's so important. So I'm so glad they clarified it so fast. So they are like, look, anything that comes from AI, you can't copyright it because a human was never involved. So the logic makes sense, right? I mean, if, if a human is involved, that becomes copyright because that's a unique idea. But when there's no humans involved, if you start copywriting that, then there'll be millions of things being created. It's gonna become a copyright nightmare. So, so there you go, Professor. That's, uh, so I hope that answers your question, Professor. Any other question before I go to the next topic, sir? Jules, just to let everybody know, think about this. This is very powerful information that you can use in so many parts of your life and work, marketing in your business, presentations that you want to do in PowerPoint or in a conference. You can instantly create images exactly that you need for your presentations. That's what I'm excited, sir. If I was a kid, a student, you know, in the olden days, I had to download some image, you know, which I don't like or something. And, you know, there may be some copyright logo, you know, watermark and all that nonsense. So now, you know, whatever my mind can come up with, I can create it, make my presentation my own. Jay, do you know if there's an AI to create music? Yes, sir. Uh, really? Already a lot of lot of mess has been created. Uh, you know, uh, what happens, uh, Professor, is uh, there is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, Professor, let me just get my uh, whiteboard here, okay? So okay. what happens, Professor, is, uh, it, uh, just to give an insight into how AI works, my dear students and Professor Lambert, so what happens, so how the technology works is, so please imagine that you have some guy, okay? So you have some guy and let's say this guy is super fast, like a supercomputer. So what these guys are doing is they are feeding millions and millions of amount of data for the last 10 year or so. Now this is what is called as training, okay? So what these guys are up to is for the last 10 years or so, they've been taking whatever painting they can get from all over the world, not just the popular painters, just every painting they can get their hands on and they are feeding it to this massive computer, which is trying to learn everything. 
Okay, so now this is how AI works. So it's, it has so much information. So when we ask for something, it is able to create something using that information. So similarly, if you're talking about a music or something, same thing happens here again, professor. So all they have to do is they have submitted a lot of music song, uh, you know, data information from whatever music they can get. They have fed that into the song AI and it is able to, you know, like even mimic or even recreate a voice of existing artists already, you know, that, that technology already exists, sir. yes. Uh, professor, did I answer? Yeah, okay. There was professor. Yes, I, I can see you now. Yes, sir. So, so, or oh, there you go, guys. So, so, professor, you, you, anything you can think of: art, text, coding, music, and uh, you you may not believe this, but there is AI already creating movie scenes, like completely create a scene. Like it can you can say like, give me a five second scene of a woman walking down the street in rain. And the AI will create some kind of a 3D, you know, like we watch 3D movies. So, so it'll create like a 3D animated movie completely on its own with the camera angle and everything just the way you want. You know, there's, there's something called lucid dreaming. So when you sleep at night and you dream, you can actually become conscious in your dreams. Yes, sir. Yes, there's sir. a story of this man who said, he said up to the sky, he said up to the sky in his lucid dream, he says, I want to see a painting of my life. This was like 20 years ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he, he said he, he waited like a second or two. It wasn't there in novels. But like five seconds later, all of a sudden, there appeared in the sky this painting with oil, like an oil painting of his entire life in his dream. And he was just amazed how quickly a huge painting like that of his entire life, personal life, was created in five seconds. Yes, sir. And, and that's like a divine power within us. And now we have artificial intelligence doing something similar. This is incredible. Yes. It is, sir. It is. It is. And you can also see why this um, does bother a lot of people. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, folks like me, we are excited because we are in the, you know, we are in the technology world. So we like stuff like this and you know, it makes our life uh, better. You know, uh, but again, of course, a lot of people are concerned as well. But to me personally, Dr. Lambert, for me, this is democratization. You know, everybody has access to something which wasn't there before. So I personally and professionally am happy for it. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm concerned about it. It's just, to me, it's like, wow. <laughs> uh, actually, Dr. Lambert, uh, right now as we speak, uh, the Hollywood writing industry is going on strike against AI as one of the reasons. So, so that's something I want to just mention, even though it's not related, uh, because you can see the power of it, right? The, the artists are really concerned. Uh, you know, like right now, if this keeps getting better, a day may come where somebody with money to hire an artist might simply not choose to hire an artist at all. So, so stuff like that will always keep happening. So, you know, I think this is similar to the industrial revolution, uh, you know, like, uh, or the internet revolution from the nineties where, where librarians were angry at the internet. So what you really need are people who know how to use this artificial intelligence to the, to the potential to bring it to the public who, who don't really know how to use it. Exactly, sir. And that is where I believe, you know, when I, when, I, when I shared the topic, this topic for the workshop, you know, this is not purely technology or anything, you know, like you can literally go online and watch a video or something. But then I realized there may be a lot of students who may not have seen this in action. You know, they may have heard about it in the news or something, but now they are seeing it and you're discussing, you're asking questions as a person outside of technology, which gives them a perspective of how amazing and useful uh, this is going to be. So, so in that way, yes, sir, I am, as you, as you said, it is wow. And, and for me as a developer and as a tutor, it is even more wow because I'm able to generate much more content for my own YouTube channel and website. And I'm able to create better material ever since I embraced AI in my life. So for me, it has been a boost in productivity. So whatever I was able to do in one hour before AI, I'm able to do it like at least 20 minutes early. So for me, it has become a professional boon. And I'm going to show that as well in a few minutes, sir. So, so your message to the students here is that you can learn programming, you can learn the programming languages, 
but at the same time, really learn the artificial intelligence so that you, so that you can use it as a tool and be able to correct its mistakes. It, exactly, sir. Exactly. Like it is. It is no different. Then, like for example, the uh, Professor Lambert, like I always have a, a notebook with me to take notes. Now, a notebook helps you, you know, remember things. You know, it, it helps you elicit things. You know, express things and so on. So AI is is one more tool for a student to get where they want to go faster, like any other tool. You know, like like for example, right now, if somebody is attending this workshop. They can choose not to, but a lot of people choose to be here so that they believe they'll get some knowledge which can help them get ahead to wherever they are trying to get ahead in life. It could be a career, it could be a grade, it could be something else, right? So similarly, chat GPT and all the AI things are, is one more tool. And if you're smart, if you're clever, this is not going away, professor. So is, this is a one-way street now. You know, it's like time. Time only goes forward. It doesn't go backward. So this is going to be here. It's going to be here to stay. So the sooner a student embraces this, the better equipped they will be for the future. Not only like today, personal life, professional life, everything you can think of. So I wanna say that once again, you go to your student portals and you're going to see a link at the top of that quick menu on the left that says chat GTP. You can click on there and actually start using chat GTP as a student. So yeah, the name of our university is AIU, which is like Artificial Intelligence University. We're already there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that connection, Dr. Lambert. You know, I, I was thinking uh, somebody will eventually make that connection that you got there. And I just realized like it was like not there. I didn't make the connection, but I was looking like before I logged in that little photo, no, like AI, you, you know, I'm talking about AI. What am I missing? What am I missing? So thank you for that, Professor. Yes. <laughs> uh, guys, there's a quick question. So it's very easy, guys. There's a download button here. You know, if you like a photo, just right click. You can save We it. have a question from Mumbai. Uh, and you can just download here as well. No issues. It's very straightforward. Just download it. And then like any other photo, use it in your PowerPoint, wherever you want. And the best part is every image you have done, it remembers. See, like, for example, the other day, I was wow. making a, 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 I was writing something about skeleton. So I made a skeleton photo. I was writing about that Arthur Conan Doyle guy. I got this photo. So everything I've done is already stored online. Like I was trying to imagine a guy just sitting in a park. So everything is already stored as well. So you wow. can use it all the time. So these are all, and I tried to create an Indian woman professor because you know I'm from India. So there you go. And I tried to create myself professor, like a tutor teaching in his class. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing so much about it. So I just like but this it, stuff. It, it gives you images so quickly with color and yes, I, I mean, it really is amazing. I could see how artists are concerned. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, uh, Professor, I'm, uh, should, uh, can I go to the next topic then before time runs out? One more thing. I we have a question. We have a question from oh. Mbaye Ilunga. Can you unmute your, there you go. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good morning. Uh, hello, Dr. Lambert. Hello, good can to see you. Hear, can you hear me? Perfectly, perfect. Oh, all right. My question goes like this. I love the I love the things of ding dong where you press and then everything appears. That is a very good thing. But and my concern is that um we have what it's called critical thinking. So when we start getting everything like you, 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 what you want, you then you get it just quick like that. We'll be able to to get some things in our mind, like in our brain, to keep to save it. Like when we studying, we need to 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 have something in us, like like we want to save it, like. It's gonna help us in our uh, in future research actually. So, but this kind of research is it, it's good, but it's gonna not um, diminu uh, like cannot suppress us down like in a way of thinking. That is my my question. Uh, so, uh, 
I, 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 I'm not able to pronounce the name, so I'm just going to go with it. So, so, um, so the, uh, what you're saying is uh, correct, but, but then again, this is where, uh, at least in my classes, this, this, this question comes up a lot, and my response is always the same. The march of technology cannot be stopped. It will never stop just because, you know, sometimes, you know, like, for example, when, 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 uh, you know, I, I did, I did a lot of history. So if you look at any kind of a war or something like that, it moves innovation at a high speed. It brings about new technology and stuff like that. Similarly, when we are doing, uh, like right now, we are on the cusp of AI. So it is going to affect absolutely, but ultimately it is still a tool and, and the tool is, is only as good as the person who is using it. So if we are able to embrace this technology and use it the right way, then we can benefit from it and not be harmed by it. That, that's what I want to answer, Professor. That's what, I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, to answer this question about critical thinking, I just put a, a link into chat and this woman is talking about how to use chat GTP to learn anything. And she goes through these steps of how to, how to ask GTP for certain things. And one of the last steps in this learning process is how you can use GTP, chat GTP, to develop critical thinking on a subject. It, it gives you tests. It gives you examples. It'll test your thinking so that you can do the thinking yourself. <laughs> and she shows you how to do that in the, in the video. All right. Thank you so much for the answer. So you can even use chat GTP to develop your critical thinking. It will help you do that. It's a, it's really, that's the beauty. That's the ultimate part of chat GTP is it helps people learn how to think if they use it correctly. Yeah. Thank you so much any, for that. Any, any, it's no problem. No problem. Any other questions I need to answer Dr. Lambert? Uh, there's just one more thing I want to show before we wrap up. Yes. Yeah. I don't see any other questions. Okay. Okay. You're good so to go. it, in that case, folks, one last thing I want to leave with you before we wrap up here, the last 10 minutes is, and then we can take you know, questions and stuff. Now, I mentioned that if you're going to use chat GPT, you are usually on the free plan. Now, you can see right now that I'm on the free plan. And if you want to upgrade, you want a faster experience and stuff like that, uh, they have a subscription service and stuff like that and so on. Now, I'm not using that mainly because I myself don't use chat GPT directly because my focus is more on coding itself. Now chat GPT can do coding amongst other things. Now for coding specifically, what I use is, is what is called as GitHub Copilot. So what is happening here is it is a service. So once again, as usual, go online and you search for GitHub Copilot, you'll end up on the GitHub Copilot website. So this is another AI, it's right there in the title, which is literally designed for only for coding and nothing else. Now, this is what I use in my daily life. You know, whenever I'm working for a client, whenever I'm taking a class, uh, whenever I'm you know, writing a blog post or making a YouTube video or something, whenever I need new material, specifically coding, I end up using this. So once again, here, there's no free thing or something like that. So there is a direct cost for this. You can see the plan here. If you are a student, it's like 10 bucks per month. If you're a business, of course, the prices are different and so on. So this is absolutely not free. So until you're able to pay for stuff, my request is you know, continue to use chat GPT, which is free right now. I don't know how long they'll keep the pipes open for free. I do not know. But because I'm already running a business and everything, I directly went ahead and I purchased the co-pilot subscription. So let's say one of you decides to go for it. They do have a free trial, like a one month trial. Okay. And I do believe uh, irrespective of your uh, you know, economic situation, 10 bucks a month could be beneficial in the long run. So I'm going to show co-pilot right now how it works. So in one of the previous classes, I explained to you guys that uh, I use what is called as, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here for today. So today is May 12th uh, coding. And I explained to you that I use this editor called as VS Code. It is in one of my previous videos. So let's go ahead and open that. There we go. Okay. 
Now, uh, in fact, Dr. Lambert will remember, uh, uh, I kept saying that this guy is like a monkey or something, but Professor Lambert told me he looks like a pilot. I still remember that moment all the way back. So, uh, so this is already here. So this is the, you'll see a small tiny symbol like a pilot, okay? So that is your GitHub uh, co-pilot waiting to help you with whatever it is that you're trying to do. Now, I am usually working on JavaScript. So what I'll do here is just like the whole chat JPT, I'm going to open a new file, right? I'm gonna say uh, show to the class.js JavaScript, right? So .js, and then I have the file right now. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna go view, appearance, zoom in a little bit more, hold on. I think that's big enough. Uh, Dr. Lambert, are you able to see what I'm typing, sir? Is it visible? Yes. Should I make it bigger? Is, I think this is okay. I think so. That looks, that, looks, that looks okay. Okay. So now here, the prompting works a little different. Now in chat GPT, what we did till now is I go here and I ask chat, chat GPT something like, uh, give, me a, uh, give me an array with uh, 10 superhero names. So I type it out and then I press enter and it's gonna do its stuff. And then it's gonna go ahead and show it to me. And then if I want to use this code, I have to click on the copy code and then I can paste it in my code pen. I can paste it in my file, you know, whatever it is uh, that I am trying to do. So it, it seems to me a little bit of a roundabout way of doing things. It's not, I still have to go to this website. Uh, let's say I'm working on a very, very important project where time is of importance. I don't really have, I log in and the website says, Sorry, Jay, you are on the free plan. We are busy right now. You know how it happens in life. When you really badly want something, that is when it's not there. Uh, and especially if you are on the free plan, that happens all the time. So now with chat, with Copilot, I already have the subscription. I already have it added to my tool because when I'm coding, I'm always using VS Code. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I'll say slash slash. So in chat GPT, you have a chat box where you have to type what you want. Whereas in VS Code, there's no chat box. You simply type slash slash. That is the symbol for commenting. You know, those of you who already do programming, you know what I'm talking about? Whenever you want to comment, you put slash slash. So I'm going to say slash slash. And then I'm going to say, uh, give me an array of 10 uh, cities in... Um, Professor, where are you from, Professor? Which city are you, which uh, state are you from? Say the, the Southwest of the United States. Okay, I'm gonna say 10 cities in the Southwest of USA. So now, the AI well, should give me an array. Well, there, aren't, there aren't that many cities. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, Professor, if it comes up with it. I don't know. It seems to say Los Angeles. I don't know if that's correct, Professor. You have to. Yeah, that, that works. Oh, there you go. So there seems to be some cities it can come up with. Yes. So uh, uh, there you go. So I got 10, I think I got some nine cities. That's yeah, it. That'll work. So in, 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 in VS Code uh, with GitHub Copilot, okay, so your AI is already built in to the tools that you're using to code. Now, this is easier for me because I don't have to go here. I don't have to chat. I don't have to type everything, copy and paste. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, it's free so you can live with it, which is exactly why we started the presentation with this version, because this one, everybody can try because it is free. However, if you are thinking like, okay, you know, this AI thing looks cool and you don't want to be roadblocked uh, because of, you know, and it, it is $10 anyway, and they have a free trial. So if you are a programmer, I would strongly recommend, oh, I'm not getting any commission from Microsoft for doing this workshop. I'm just saying, I strongly recommend that you please go ahead and try out the trial. And if it is useful, then you should definitely go ahead and you know just, just, just pay for it. And this can be your coding tutor. You know, if you learn how to use this, you could probably you know, save yourself a lot of time. Uh, like if you're thinking of hiring a private tutor or something, and then you're like, no, they're all expensive or not available. The AI could become your private tutor complementing your university education. You know, whatever your friend might be doing in one day, 
thanks to AI, you could finish it off in half a day. So you have half a day remaining. I don't know, take a nap, watch a movie, go on a date. So many possibilities, so many possibilities. So this is the second thing I want to show, guys. So that is what I want to show. I have five minutes left on the clock, so I think I'm early as well. So there you go, guys. These are the things I wanted to show you. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know, uh, please. Uh, we have time. I can answer it. Anything, you know, not, it doesn't have to be about this in general, AI concerns, anything you have, please. Well, if you don't have a question, at least tell us how you think you can use this information in your life. What sort of, what sort of ideas do you have to say, you know, I could do this, I could do this. And, and then other people will, other students will get an idea too. Okay, we got favor. Go ahead, unmute your microphone. Let me try again. Go ahead and click on there to unmute your microphone. Favor Bolawa, can you do it? Can you unmute your microphone? Let me try again. Do you see a button on your screen to unmute your microphone? I think they are they are unable to find the mute button, Dr. Mm -hmm. Lambert. It's a little button that just appears right in the center of the screen. Let me try again. Okay, I think go ahead and write your question into chat or your idea. You know, think how can you use this? Uh, while while they are thinking about that, Dr. Lambert, I'm just going to quickly share a video I made about this exact thing. Uh, for one of my students. So I'm just going to go and share that as well to the chat. And it also contains information if anybody wants to like ask me more questions and stuff. No, There are two excellent ideas that just came up in chat. Do you see those, Jay? Uh, let's see. Um, kindly, kindly give a demonstration in mathematics from Gertrude. So and math is kind of tricky, Dr. Lambert, because uh, one, I don't know. I mean, I don't teach math. I know math. I don't teach it. So I really don't know how AI would do that. Uh, let me try. I don't know. Uh, give me a quadratic equation example. So it might show something. I never tried that, Dr. Lambert. So it's going to be new for me as well. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's a quadratic equation. There you go. You now, know, ask some... it, now ask it to give the uh, calculus derivative. Uh, calculus derivative example. It's doing something. Uh, this is the whole thing, Dr. Lambert. It's still thinking, so I can't. I had to wait for it. Oh, there you go. So it stopped its explanation. All right. They, it even gave me the code if I'm going to try it in coding. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, so it tries to be as friendly as possible, sir, and it seems to be getting better every day. Seems to work, Professor. Uh, again, I know, I know, I don't know much about math, Professor. I mostly just barely cruise through it, so I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, but yeah, it seems to work, sir. Well, you could probably program in a, a, an equation and say, give me the derivative of this, or you could say the first derivative or the second derivative of this equation, and it would come back and probably give it. Uh, let me put it, sir. Give me the first derivative of, let me see if it thinks about it. Oh, there you go, sir. It's doing it already. It's even giving an explanation like a teacher would, you know, like, hey, do this, do this, do this, do this next, do this next. There it is. I can, I can see a lot of people getting worried from this professor, <laughs> I can tell you. There it is, there's the first derivative. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Uh, uh, the second question, professor, is, uh, so uh, this- uh, uh, Next uh, question is, could you use it to create a storyboard for a film script? Actually, Professor, the answer is very, it's true. In fact, I have sometimes I sit down when I'm bored and ask the AI to give me a romantic story. So I could do that right now. So like, give me a short romantic story about, um, uh, about a man and a woman from uh, different uh, cultures. And it'll try no, no, to- say, say storyboards. Give me a short romantic storyboard. It can't draw though, so it's okay. It'll so, give like uh, an outline, maybe a story outline. It's doing that right now, Professor. Oh, it is. You can see that it's writing a romantic story about a man from the United States and a woman from Saudi Arabia. Nice. It's typing it away. It's typing it away. And the best part, sir, is you can do what is called as 
follow up prompting. So let's say I have this story. Uh, go on, go on, Professor. You have something interesting. Go on, go yeah, on. Yeah, I just want to say that you know our students can write assignments like an essay, but they can also do a video assignment where they create a video. Now you can ask Chat GTP to write the script for your video. Yes. And you can use Bing.com to create images for your video. That's right. Sir. And you just read it and create the images. And we are fine with that because you are learning a powerful technology expressing high knowledge. We are fine with that type of uh, assignment. You can, you can use these tools to actually create the script for your video and the images for a PowerPoint presentation. Back That's to you, correct. Sir. That is correct. So you can leverage on multiple tools. So like jump from one tool to another. Uh, and then like, for example, there are AIs available. I haven't used them. So there are AIs available, which can generate music as well. So you can literally start taking things like from here to there. And, uh, you know, like, like normally what would require a team of five people or something. Now you, you can, you know, and maybe you don't have access to those people. So you can sit down and do everything from your home. So that's what I'm talking about democratization. So something which was not possible is now possible. So that's where I am always getting that. So, uh, yeah, there you go, there you go, sir. That's I, I hope that answers the uh, you know the question of Cedo. Um, uh, Arthur is asking, can I also be used for Excel? So, guys, about the Excel thing, ultimately, we'll still have to. If you're okay with copy pasting, then you would have to, yes. Uh, but otherwise, uh, from what I understand, Microsoft is trying to bring the AI to Microsoft Word and Excel very soon but it's not there yet. So they are, they are getting there. So eventually I expect uh, AI to end up in office products as well. For example, I, uh, the, the one I showed you, uh, this is actually a Microsoft browser, you know, the Internet Explorer Edge. It has this on the top right corner. It's only available on Internet Explorer Edge. So this is already trying to help me with grammar. It's trying to help me with images. So yes, I truly believe that uh, a day is not far and this will be integrated into Excel and Word. Maybe another six months, not more than that. So the answer is yes, it will come to Word and Excel. I'm 100% I'm sure of it. It's not a big deal, really. Uh, Omnaya Adur is asking, can I give a prescription to a specific diagnosis? So that's the thing, guys. That's where I call it the gray area. So some things should not be with AI. You know, like you wouldn't ask a website to cure a disease. So that should still remain the domain of a doctor, yes. Jay, now I want to ask you, you have years of experience in programming. You've probably seen it all. Kind of, yes, sir. How is artificial intelligence going to open your mind and open your opportunities for you? Uh, for me, uh, Dr. Lambert, you, I, I believe I've mentioned this in the previous workshops as well. So if I were to uh, uh, let me just get my uh, drawing board here, sir. So let's say- It's like yeah. something you've never been able to do before, but now you're able to. Exactly, so exactly. Like what happens, professor, is uh, like, like every other technology professional, like if, uh, let's say this is technology, sir, and uh, what I know, despite all these years, is probably like this much. And, and many times, professor, what has happened is, I will ask the AI for something, and then many times I've noticed, like if I'm trying to do something uh, like some kind of optimization of a specific uh, code block, the AI will recommend a method which I have not seen in any textbook ever. And I was unaware of it. So now let's say uh, I, I wrote a piece of code which takes 0 0.8 seconds to run the AI will try to recommend something that will run in 0 0.5 seconds. Now you think about that for a second, Dr. Lambert, let's say this is a piece of code that runs a million times every day. So the AI just saved me 0 0.3 into 1 million seconds. So it is always trying to teach me a better way to do something. So every day I code, it's making me a better developer. So that is one way it has made my life amazing, sir, because if AI wasn't there and just for 10 bucks, it seems like I'm learning more in return for $10. So when I write a code, I show it to my client, they're impressed. Like, this looks really good. I mean, they're already impressed with me. And now they are like impressed, impressed with me because I'm learning new stuff. Now you tell me, Dr. Lambert, you are a, you are a person in a teaching industry. What is better? You know, every, you know, I'm sure you tell your students every day and yourself, every day you must learn something new. 
because if you stop learning, the rest of the world is always learning. So you're actually slowing down. If you're not running, you're going backwards. Now that is the biggest benefit for me since I started paying for it in December or something. Every time I sit down to code, the AI will give me something better because the AI is learning 24 seven. They're always trying to make it better. Now as a developer, what, I, what is better than that? Uh, my code gets better every day. And my client, as I told you, sir, it is already saving me 20 minutes per hour of work. Now that time, maybe I can work more, make more money, or I could just sit down and watch a movie. So my, my living quality is increasing because of AI. So that is how it has helped me, Professor Lambert. Okay, Jay, we have another issue here that a student is writing to me personally that they, uh, they're they doing ICT or electronic embedding, automatic, okay. electronic in automation embedding, embedding. So the reason that they, they don't want to just learn theories. They want to put it into practice. Right. Do you have do you have a way to test the theories in Chat GTP as if you were working like with a laboratory? So that is where we hit like a, a fundamental roadblock, roadblock, Professor Lambert. Because the thing is, uh, right now there is no way to make it visualize things. Uh, well, no, I, I know you you tested the code before to see to make sure that it worked. Yeah, yes, Is that yes. similar to how you could use it as a laboratory? I, I would have to say not yet, Professor Lambert. Perhaps uh, what can happen, sir, is, uh, uh, Professor, I'm putting a link there. I think you can see it as well. Uh, that's a video I made for uh, my one of my other uh, learning clients about how to use AI. So uh, maybe the students can make a copy of it. Uh, so just to let, it, let the students know as well. Uh, uh, and coming back to what you're asking, Professor, now what I'll tell you, sir, is, Right now it's a no, but what will happen is, let me just uh, go back to my drawing board here. Uh, let me just erase the previous drawing. So what will happen, sir, is, uh, as I mentioned, sir, right now, uh, in the beginning, I'm talking the chat GPT where it started. Uh, in the beginning, it was mainly about like a simple chat-based kind of experience. So you, you type something, it gives you something, but then look at what's already happening, sir. Now we are able to create images and we are able to create videos. We are able to create music. And then, as I mentioned, Microsoft is already adding AI to Word, to Excel, to PowerPoint. And in fact, so last month, I got an invitation to uh, uh, what is called as a Microsoft designer. Uh, Professor, have you seen how, for example, let me just bring my uh, screen here. Uh, so do you see on my screen right now, I'm showing you like my uh, YouTube channel. Do you see like a, a girl or something? Do you see that, Professor? Yes. So now this photo, uh, you know, I made this photo uh, using a software called as Canva. I'm sure you've seen that on YouTube. So everybody has these banners they make and stuff like that, right? So I use a software uh, called as Canva, uh, right? But these Microsoft guys, they actually invited me to try out something called as Microsoft Designer, where I can literally tell AI that I want a, I'm gonna show it to you right now, sir. I can tell AI like, hey man, can you give me, give me a YouTube banner about a student standing with a laptop? So I can just say generate and the AI is gonna do the entire design for me. And then I can just use it. So every day the scope of AI keeps increasing. Professor. There you go, sir. The banner is ready for me. I can just take a banner and I can do whatever I want with it. So like this, I believe eventually a day will come where what you're trying to say, so being able to test out complex electronic combinations will also happen, Professor Lambert. I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually comes to that. So Jay, can you describe what you just did? Uh, you, yes, sir. You created, you created like a banner page for a presentation? Uh, that's right, sir. Now, uh, what I want to show you is, uh, let me just, one thing, sir. Let me just show, let me just... Uh, you said, give me a YouTube banner page for something? Uh, yes, sir. So what I'll do is, like, I have this, um, uh, right. So, for example, sir, uh, what I did was, one second, let me just open. Uh, there you go. So now what I do, Professor, is I made this banner uh, for one of my courses that I do here in India. So where I had to make this banner, I dragged this photo, I typed everything. It took me about 30 minutes or one hour. 
Now, look at what's happening here, Professor. I have this software called Microsoft Designer. So instead of doing all that work, I can simply ask AI, like, give me a YouTube banner about a class announcement, right? So I just give it a prompt and the AI will try to create a, a, a banner with all the things I want and I can just use it directly for my marketing. Now, would you be able to edit the text on that banner? Exactly, sir. So it will give me a template and then I can sit down and make some changes. You know, I can add stuff, I can edit stuff and things like that. And you try to recommend other variations as well. So if I don't like this, I can simply keep trying more until I get the one I want. And then here I can start changing things like class announcement and I can, I'm sure there's a copy button. There you go, duplicate. And I'm gonna say, well, you know, jazz class or something. So I can sit down and edit out jazz class join today. So I can sit down, make changes and stuff like that. So this is what I'm talking about, Professor. Every month, AI is being expanded to things which you would have thought is not possible. So what do you ask me about those electronic circuits? May, you know, eventually a day will come and the company that makes that software will include an AI component. So very much a possibility what you're saying, sir, but not right now yet. That would be my answer. You know, you know, Jay, it seems like what one thing you said is this is like having a personal teacher about anything you want to know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I hope the students see that. I hope the students see that this is not replacing their teacher. It's complementing it. You know, like, for example, professor, you are a professor, like I do some teaching and something. I only have a limited amount of time to help students. Now, what a professor, the AI can take care of all the simple questions. And people like you and me, we can spend our limited time focusing on the difficult questions. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. So this doesn't replace tutors. It gives the tutors a chance to you know, take on more challenging questions, sir. You know, teachers are always complaining their life has become boring. AI is going to make their life interesting because now they have to really work hard because there's a guy helping them. <laughs> what more do you want to talk about today, Jay? Uh, professor, that's all. That's the main things I want to say. I wanted the students to, uh, you know, really pursue down this road. I really want them to try the chat GPT, I know I do coding sessions, everything I've done in the previous sessions and the future and everything, I want them to understand that, you know, they may be limited by money, they may be limited by time or something. There is an AI person to help them out. And if they're able to put together $10 a month, I really want them to try GitHub Copilot and I've showed them how to use both. And I, I've showed them some extra things as well, what AI can do. So I, I want them to explore, sir, and I think, I have done that, Professor. So I believe I'm all set as far as I'm concerned. If there are any questions, I'm happy to keep answering. Sir. Okay, all the students have chat GTP in their student sections available to them. You have an account with for free and you have a certain amount of uh, information that you can use, but we also have designer.microsoft.com, Bing Image Creator and GitHub Copilot. Anything more, Jay? That's all I have uh, for today, Professor. But this is this is this is going to be huge, sir. I'm telling you, uh, this is this is going to be huge. I am really excited to see, uh, and I'm kind of jealous for today's students, sir, because we didn't have these things. I keep thinking, if I had these things, what else would have Jay done in his life? <laughs> in in my work, I, I I discovered something that nobody had ever seen in the world. And it was, a, it was a discovery of how to really see the symbolism of acupuncture, Chinese medicine. Yes, sir. I, took, yes, sir. I took all of the principles of Chinese medicine and integrated them into one spherical pattern. So that is cool. That, is, that was also found within astrological uh, symbolism within the West. But there's nobody, ChatGB would have no idea what I wanted to do. I was the only one who discovered it and I had to develop it. And, and if chat GTP was there, it would not have been able to help me because I had to discover it through yes, decades, yes. decades of discovery. 
So, so in some sense, we still have to use our own brains to discover the deeper mysteries of life. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. So it, it, it complements your life. It doesn't replace you or anybody. It's more about uh, complementing. You know, it's like, like, for example, so like I work on my PC, but a lot of times I'm doing work on my iPad. Now, the iPad doesn't replace my main computer. It simply helps my main computer. Like I'm talking to you, suddenly a client jumps in and like he has a question. I'll take the Zoom call from the iPad. It's easier, it's faster. But when, when work gets real, I still have to turn on my computer. So I believe that's what's gonna happen. So for the next 10 years, AI is gonna be integrated in employee manuals, student universities, uh, you know, like, uh, like support, like suicide help and stuff like that. Wherever there is a manpower, kind of limitation, wherever there is a routine task, you know, stuff like bill payments, stuff like asking general questions like, hey man, like let's say professor, there's a class scheduled for Monday and it changes. So let's say somebody messages you, maybe your, your, your phone is connected to AI, you're sleeping, uh, the phone can simply reply them, hey guys, I already rescheduled the class to Tuesday. Yeah, I could do that, it's a very routine thing. So that's what I see going forward, sir. I believe that as time goes ahead, just like smartphones became part of our lives, I believe AI will get integrated. Yes, it'll always have some concerns, but then again, which technology does not have concerns? So I think we'll be okay, Professor, I feel so. And also, Professor, I feel like as I grow older, I feel like perhaps I may not be able to make any good friends, but now I feel better because at least I have a computer as my friend. Like it's the middle of the night, I need someone to talk about movies. I don't know where I'm going to do that, but I can always open up my chat app and I can ask it, hey man, what do you think about the new Indiana Jones movie? And the, and the chat guy is like, yeah, I think it's okay. So that's good enough for me. It's like talking to millions of people at the same time through one exactly. person. Exactly. So, you know, nobody else is there. I, I feel like AI can make wonders for emotional support. So, you know, we read all the time that every day, every year, people are getting further and further apart. Perhaps oh AI will give them that kind of comfort they're looking for. You could even use chat GTP as a, a psychological counselor. I believe it already has to. Uh, at least to me, you know, whenever I'm coding, Professor, I almost feel like I have a friend all the time. It's like can you give me like you, can you give me some advice? I'm going through a, 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 a an emotional breakup in my relationship, right? Exactly. So it, it actually gives. You know, I can I, we can try that right what, now. What steps can I take to get over this? And it'll come out and give you like ten. What ten? What are the ten best steps I can do to get over this emotional trauma I'm going through? And it'll come and, and help you, right? That it'll do that, sir. Yeah. It, oh it, my it, God. Telling you things. There you go, sir. Feeling money. It's, it's already giving me some suggestions. Like reach out to someone, join a I community. Feel what can I do to feel better? Uh, volunteer, get active, seek profile. There you go, sir. I don't see how. I believe in the in the long run, this will be a good thing, professor. So ask right now, Chat GTP. Can you be my friend? I think you just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, it's not capable. Of, however, I'm here to, oh, it's, it's being very careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sitting on the fence. <laughs> like a real friend would, you know, like if you have a friend is like, hey man, whatever happens tomorrow, will you help me out? And the friend is like, sure, man, sure. I will, I will help you out with, with the conditions attached, you know. <laughs> okay, we just have a, I don't know if you have, any, do you have time for one question? Or two? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are there any limitations to chat GTP? So lots, lots of limitations. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's not always accurate. Uh, uh, but the thing is, spotting the, the wrong answer is a challenge, uh, yeah, which is why I always tell my students, don't depend on it 100%. You still need a tutor. You still need a tutor because somebody has to point out that something is wrong. Now, I've already been coding for 10 years, so I can always, you know, when something wrong comes up, I know it's wrong, but a new student may not have that. So that is one big limitation. So when it's saying something, it could be spewing out wrong and even incorrect information. So as with any other technology, the ultimate responsibility stays with you to validate the information. So that is a big limitation so because you know I, I'm sure it's there somewhere in, in some terms and conditions. So that's the biggest thing. The second thing, sir, obviously these things will eventually cost a lot of money. So that is gonna be a second limitation. And we talked about democratization. 
but still, sir, even democracy costs taxes. <laughs> so somebody has to pay for all this. Uh, so it's it'll still leave out a huge population. So like in India, ten dollars is a lot of money, Dr. Lambert. You know, uh, even even a middle income uh, family cannot afford that kind of money every month, even if they have three kids or something. Uh, so I believe the second limitation is going to be uh, can and also these all these AI things are owned by Western companies, sir. You know, my uh, ChatGPT is from Microsoft. You know, the other AI is from Microsoft, and again, America. Everything is from America. So let's say if something goes wrong and for whatever reason it stops working for someone in India, I'm 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 left holding an empty bag if I become too dependent because we don't have an Indian version of AI. I mean, we can't build it, sir. This this kind of technology doesn't exist. It never will. So these are the limitations we have to accept, uh, Professor. You know, uh, and these things will not go away. In fact, it'll get worse. I think in another couple of years, right now they are giving this for free. They're going to shut everything down. Uh, they'll force you to pay stuff, or maybe there's an ad every second message, just like YouTube. So do you remember in the olden days, YouTube was so fun. Today they show you six ads for a two-minute video. So there you go, sir. That's the limitation. So it will still remain a rich man's toy, sir. Yeah, that is the sad reality of life. One thing's for certain, Jay. Your, your, your work is not done. What are you coming back to talk about next time? Uh, sir, uh, next week, I, I'm just going to quickly check my diary, sir. Hold on, sir. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Uh, 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 one second, sir. I believe next week I am speaking about... One second, sir. Because uh, we, we we're not going to, we're, we're not gonna ask a chat GTP to come in and teach a course like you do. <laughs> it won't be able to do it. Uh, that's okay, Professor. <laughs> I'm ready for AI, uh, you know, if AI to, uh, you know, if it comes down to that, I think I'm emotionally ready for that. So, so the next session I'm talking about uh, React.js, uh, because a lot of people have been asking about it in my other classes, like what is React and stuff like that. Uh, can, you, so can, you write, can you write that down into, sure, into sir, sure, sure. what one that second. is? Let me bring up the PowerPoint here, one second. The next session, I'm going to be- So, uh, so everybody, walk, look at this word, read about it so you get prepared for the next session. I'm just going to type it here, sir. Okay. So the next session with Jay is going to cover this particular topic, and we want you to research it before next class so that you're prepared with the concepts React JS framework. Uh, so the best thing they can do is uh, watch my previous two sessions. I believe it's already there on your YouTube channel, Professor. So if they can watch that uh, while they're preparing, it will really help them follow along. Yes, sir. Now, JS is JavaScript for everybody to know. That's right, sir. That's right, sir. So the React, React JavaScript framework. Yes, sir. Uh, guys, and I've shared a video link which uh, goes, to, uh, goes into a little bit more detail on how to use AI during coding. So I made that video for one of my other customers, and I was able to upload that to my YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel has uh, links to my GitHub, my Twitter, and all those things. So if you guys have any questions, just come to my Twitter and just ask me a question. I am there all the time. You're amazing, Jay. Absolutely amazing. Are you being too kind, Dr. Lambert? <laughs> I don't think so. You truly are amazing. I, and I the, way, know, and, you know, the way you present this stuff, understand this stuff, incorporate this stuff, and get everybody involved in it. You're amazing. I'm just excited, Professor. Like every time I do technology I, from childhood, I'm, I'm always being excited. You know, computers, coding, it, it just gets my head flying. Okay, no more questions. I think we're done today. Thank you so much, Jay. Yes, sir. Um, we just know you as Jay. <laughs> uh, so actually, uh, guys, if you want, another thing uh, before you go, Professor, what you can do is, as I said, if you just want to follow, best, the best thing you guys can do is just follow me on Twitter. Any question you have, just tweet my, tweet my name, tag me, and I reply. That's it. A lot of my students, what they do, that's what they do, sir. They just hit me up on social media, and they get stuck. I just uh, reply to them. So the best way, guys, your, is do you go put online. Your Twitter on here? Uh, Yes, yeah, sir. Just go online, guys. And so I'm going to put my name here. Uh, hold on, Professor. Let me just get another slide. Guys, all you have to do is on your mobile phone, just search for my name. Uh, I'm not very popular, but search engines like me. So just take my name. Uh, it's on the slide right now. I'm going to keep it there. And uh, all you have to do is just go to the internet. Okay. I'm going to show that right now. 
and then just put my name and I'll come. The entire page is mine, sir. I'm quite popular on the internet. That's wow. me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, <laughs> uh, that's, that's me, that's me. I'm there on the first page. Just Google my name. That's it. You, will you find are me. in the search engines. Yes, sir. <laughs> Optimization <laughs> search engine. Before I go away, Professor, I'm, I want to share with you. Uh, this is something I'm very proud of, sir. Uh, about you might want to teach a course on, on search engine optimization. I do, Professor. I actually, you know, do it for uh, <laughs> Professor. I just want to show this to you. I have an award from Microsoft from 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. I was one of the 100 people chosen that year to receive this award all over India. Wow. Nice. See, you are amazing, right? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So just Google my name, guys. Just Google my name and you'll find everything about me, my blog, my YouTube channel, my Twitter, my Instagram. Just follow me on any of those things. You have a question, just message me. Uh, every day I spend about an hour or two just replying to my student messages from the last 10 years. So I don't mind it. <laughs> okay, everybody, you are connected. This is a ticket to incredible skills to use the internet and information for anything you need in work, business, relationships. The, really, the sky, the sky, the limit of the sky has just been broadened out into space. The sky is no longer the limit, right? I agree, sir. I agree. I think that we need to change that. It's, it's space now. It's space and beyond. Yeah. It's like the galaxy is the limit. You no longer the sky is the limit. No, the galaxy is the limit. I agree, Professor. As a professor, I do believe that right now in this era, we are living in a time of a new kind of possibilities. So the, the youth of today, you know, like I think I'm beyond youth now. Obviously, Professor, you're also beyond youth. But the today's youth, the ones who are in their 20s and teenagers and all that, they have an opportunity to do something awesome, sir, because everything is now in front of them. So that's what I believe, Professor. I believe... We're going to see some real innovation for the next 10 years or so. I think so, sir. Oh, yeah. In, and in it's the too next bad. Two we, we may not be around to see all that, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anything can happen. Stranger things have happened. We'll be back somehow. <laughs> 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 I will keep my fingers crossed, Professor. <laughs> and hopefully, we are both back in the same town or something. <laughs> At the same computer. Same computer, yes. <laughs> oh, All right, guys, any other questions, let us know. <laughs> okay, everybody, a wonderful, wonderful, excellent class from Jay. A lot to, a lot to discover here. Jay, just thank you so much. We look forward to your next class. No problem, Professor. And uh, thank you again, uh, Professor Lambert. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next class, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, you can all unmute yourself, I think. If I hold on, my, my mouse is not biting. There it goes. You can all unmute yourself and say thank you and bye. Thank you and bye. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.